Thanks, random guy from Argentina. Welcome back to another episode of Searching for MacGuffin with your host... Carnitas. With your host, Carnitas and Carne Asada. That's the guy's name from Argentina. It isn't, but it sounds something like that. Oh, that's who that was. Okay, so we're not Carnitas and... No, we're not, no. George. Gabe. And that's it. Yeah. Two-man power trip. It's April 1st when you're listening to this, maybe... No, no, it's not. This is tomorrow's episode. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, I guess we can't. It was can. an early April Fool's. April show. Fool's. Uh, it's got you. <laughs> it's a week early. We can't keep track. Oh, Carnitas, you're so funny. Thank Classic you. Classic Carnitas. Thank you, Carne Asada. All right. So we're back. Just you and I. Just and- you and I. I, I, I. Okay. And we're going to do a quick and dirty over 30 because i'm almost 30 that's right and i am just a little over 30 just a little bit um so that's about yeah it's we're gonna call it an over 30 but we're probably gonna go over 40 because that's how old i am so Mm. maybe we'll yeah we'll stop we'll stop at your age wait and then and then people will have to figure that out oh okay cool all right i think i might have just said it but you know what? What have you done? Oh, we're back for the monthly, guys. When have we had a... Have we even had a monthly? In 2024? I want to say yes. You want to say yes? I want to say yes. I want to say no. I don't think we can go back and check. What do you think, guys? Do you yeah. think we've had a monthly? Put on the social media. If you think we've had a monthly, <laughs> let us know. I don't know how social media works. Is that a good question? I don't know. I deleted my social media. Oh, that's me too. Wow, no wonder. We don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a peaceful life. It really is, though. It's helped with my, um, I mean, real talk right now. It's kind of going through uh, an episode mm. about with depression. Mm. And I did do that. I, uh, you know, got my, I don't have a lot of social media. I think I've talked about it on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I only have Reddit. But I do go into these like fugue states where I'm just reading, 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 reading. You're reading. just reading Snyder Cut. Yeah. <laughs> Snyder Cut. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's negative summer. stuff too. Yeah. So I just, I got my personal account off of my device and. Uh, nice. I'm proud of you. Yeah. And um, I've been a lot more productive lately and it has really, really changed um, my uh, perspective. You know? Yeah. I do think that not having, I mean, Instagram was the main one for me and even like. I had like muscle memory of like me flipping to my phone and going mm. to that app. Yeah. Um, and then like, you know, I mean, now I'm like on Twitter, which I don't know. I think there's a different social aspect. I see the funny stuff from Twitter and I laugh my butt off. But like with Instagram, I don't know. I feel like it's just like mindless scrolling and just mm. trying to see what other people like what other people's lives are like. Yeah. And I where I'm at now, I'm just kind of like, I don't really care. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to see that. Yeah. But I'm like, not even I know sure that, if it's real, to be honest. I know with that you. my mind, like my body, is so accustomed to it that it's like a habit that I'm just gonna, even though I don't really care to, Me it's too. just gonna keep doing it. I, don't even, I find myself, especially when I'm down, I find myself in in, in engaging conversations with individuals and then ignoring them and going into like I'm reading while I'm talking to another person. Mm. That's not healthy behavior. Yeah. So, so I yeah. apologize if I did that to you in the past two months. Now you know. <laughs> kind of let's, now you, now you, you have know. a little bit more context yeah speaking of the past two months yeah we did have a monthly in january and apparently it was just you and me so link hates the monthly's confirmed <laughs> <laughs> wait no he's got it what is his name what's his chipotle name uh brisket no no that's what he would want it to be no that's perfection so pastora chicken, chicken al pastor, al pastor. yeah no. actually it well, could be barbacoa well chicken al pastor would kind of make sense Ah, uh, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Well, one thing you should make sure that you have time in your week or in your monthly is to create healthy habits and routines. And one of those is watching an unnecessary amount of television, godless amounts of TV. Yeah, just like a, a swathing, just binge so, that, so much that you forget everything else in life and just lose almost all of your friendship relationships right your job Mm -hmm. if possible that's extra credit that doesn't need to happen but yeah yeah if you become unemployed by watching tv you're doing it right but then how are you gonna pay for the streaming services 
Actually, you know what? You don't pay for it. That's the point. Oh, that's true, too. But you could also use, for those of you that do pay for the streaming services and let your families watch on them. Well, it's going to be over soon. But for those of you that do pay for those streaming services, use that as motivation to get up in the morning and think, you know what? I can do this because at home waiting for me is going to be some of the best TV in the history of all mankind. And also some of the worst. That also is true. I haven't. I I did good though this this month. Let's just let's get right uh, to yeah. it. Run it. What do you want to talk about first? Um, I. Not the first thing on this list. No, no, I not the first like thing. On the, that, I think that's like the best thing on the yeah, list. That is the best thing on the list. Um, let's talk about the Bad Batch. The Bad Batch. Okay, okay. I was wondering if you were going to pitch it to me. The fact that I, I mean, as I was on my way here, I'm, I'm on season two. Mind you, Bad Batch season three is almost over. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it's halfway. They they just drop. Uh, by the time this episode airs, oh no, episode nine will be coming up. So yeah. probably, yeah. So there, it's uh sixteen. No. Yeah. Something like that. Sixteen, I believe. Yeah. You can can correct me if I'm wrong, but sixteen. So we're halfway there. It's eight. Eight have been out. Okay. So do you know how many were in the last season total? No, but I can look it up while you vamp. Um, so I have been sleeping on the you, Bad Batch. You really I have. I've been sleeping. And even people that don't even watch Star Wars stuff like that. And I need you to get on Gabe's social media and shame him when you hear the show he has been watching instead of the Bad Batch. Shame me on that social media yeah. account that I don't have. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter because he'll never see it. So exactly. just go ahead and shame him or just do it in the in the. No, they can't even. The no. show. Like I deactivated. Yo, you really, like it's, it's just gone. gone. All right, all right. Then like they can't even search. What him. I need you to do is I need you to go to the show channel, right? Mm. Shame him there and then put a little note for whoever reads it to just kind of shame. forward it, shame. like take a screenshot. Shame. And then send it to Gabe. Shame. Shame. Or send it in the mail. <laughs> That's true. You know, I said that to say like someone the other day as a joke. And they were like, what's the mail? No, I was like, because it was like for a March Madness bracket thing. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, um, $10 buy-in or whatever. And I was like, oh, do you take check? And the person was like, just deadpan stared at me in the face. And we're just like, he's just upset. Who, who does checks anymore? <laughs> and I'm like. It was a joke. That joke usually goes over well with people. People usually laugh. I follow up with a little Pony Express joke after that. And then, you know, Bob's your uncle. But that time it was just like kind of awkward. Actually, I had a similar situation where, you know, they always ask you if you want to receipt at a restaurant. And almost everybody says no nowadays, right? But I always say yes because I always just want proof where, whether I'm going to use it or not. So I said, yes, I needed to che- balance my checkbook. And they just deadpan stared at me like <laughs> it was not funny. Like they were like, they're <laughs> just like. So I've, yeah, I've never printed one in my life. <laughs> you asked me to do something I've never done, and then I'm even confused as to the rationale that you gave me. Yeah. Anyways, um, Bad Batch definitely been sleeping on it. People that I know. This is the are, final season. Yeah. All seasons are sixteen episodes. Sixteen. So, okay. Cool. So we're halfway through. See the final season. I think I'm on episode three. So of, of the current season of the second season of the second. Oh, yeah. you're way behind. So got a lot to catch up on, which will be fun. It is fun. I, I like, think it's a show that's better when you binge it. Yeah, no, because sure. I watched season one and two week to week, and it was like a snail's crawl. Of nah, I remember when Clone Wars, the last season came out. Yeah, Clone Wars. I mean, every week that was like anticipation for sure. And then you go to Bad Batch, and it's like Bad Batch is still great, but it's, it's more like, episodic in nature. It's not. Yeah, it's not those events, you know. Yeah. And so, well, I was just, uh, just to mm-hmm. comment on it now, especially season three that I'm watching. We I waited, and we watched eight in a row. And then my wife, Gisela, which, you know, she's been on the show now, especially this season. Um, she was like, this season is so much better. And, like, she's right, but I don't know about so much. I just feel like she sees the connecting payoffs for every episode. Like, there'll be an episode where it's, like, a little pet, right? But then, like, three episodes down the line, it, like, it's pivotal. What happened in that episode kind of sets up the escape. Mm. So it's, like, you see a recurring, recurring themes and connecting timelines. It just... It just feels more complete instead of like, okay, 20 minutes happened and like barely anything happened. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. but you're doing it like an hour, two hours in a row. Yeah. And it's, it's much, I highly recommend binging it. Yeah. Definitely. That's, that's on the, that's but what don't I'm doing let, now. but don't let 16 episodes stack up. So that's what I like. I like to do halvesies and then I'm going to take a break. I'm on, 
have like what? How many did you say are out? Eight? Eight, correct. Eight are out, so I'm like, what, like 20 something behind? You? Yeah, yeah. You're taking my advice too to heart. It's all right. Yeah, don't let the whole series. It, I mean, probably a lot of people haven't even watched this show. I, it's worth your time. Actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm, if you're a Star Wars fan. I'm not going to say that on, on, on the air. What are you going to say? That's just a bad habit that I have. What? What are we going to say? consuming television. Uh, that is true. No, not that, but how I consume the television. Oh, okay. Um, But anyways, so yes, I am definitely going to be catching up on that. I heard there's this a lot. This is the explicit episode, so you can share it if that's the problem. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't trust that. I don't, I don't trust that that's what's going to be. I don't want to get you guys fired. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um... I did hear that there's a lot of like the 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 consensus that I've gotten people texted me or have just told me they're just like they're trying to I can see like they're 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 you know connecting the threads yes. to the sequels and yeah. kind of like the the all Star Wars which I think I mean that's I mean Filoni's a master of that man yeah I mean like we've talked about before I think he's I think what he does and what they're doing with Star Wars I think it's so great is like how he how they talked about it in last jedi mm-hmm. or like the real life japanese art form of of kintsugi yes of like you know filling in the cracks to make things that you know are broken beautiful and i think that he's you know weaving those things those stories i think he does that so great where it's like you can have something as atrocious and terrible as the rise of skywalker mm-hmm. and i mean i don't even know what what's going on in in bad batch but I believe can I, that can Filoni I can, can, can fix I, can that. Can I say a thematic? Yeah, sure. Cloning. Okay. And I think I can say that because that's what happens in the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I think. I well, we don't really. They don't really. Do they, they didn't. Really, they they introduced it and yeah. then they like cut it off right away. Yeah. But you can see them continuing to come back to this not theme but this plot, you know, and. Sometimes I'm like, oh, the clone. I don't. I don't really like clones, especially like the Palpatine, Rise of Skywalker stuff. But you think about it, it's kind of a big part of Star Wars because it's literally the Clone, the clone Wars, Wars yeah. and the Bad Batch are a group of clones. And there's a lot of clone troopers. We just kind of we like this kind of clones, right? The clone armies mm-hmm. versus you know the city is current. But I th- do think they're trying to use it to kind of c- create more cohesive. So if you didn't like things like rise of skywalker like we did i think they're making the blow a lot yeah. like lessening Softer, the blow yeah. that's I what think, they're doing but it's like i think you can have a crappy thing like you know palpatine coming back fine i mean it's it's crap but i'm sure somebody if you think hard enough can find a way to explain it to me not yeah instead of just going on fortnite and being like yo he just he's back bro it's yeah. lazy. Yeah. It's lazy. Yeah. They didn't even it's bother. It's disrespectful. Well, well, that's what they're doing now, I think. Which, that it, I mean, that's the thing. I think because they're putting time and effort into, you know. It doesn't come out of nowhere. Correcting something. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think I hate the Rise of Skywalker so much because it is the last, it's the final chapter of like, you know, the yeah. saga that we well, know. Hmm. Episode 10, baby. I hear the new Ray movie is going to be 10, episode man. 10. Oh, what? Yeah, I heard that. They're they're toying with it. They might not decide that, but they're basically working. Is this with like it. wait? Is it like redemption? If they do that, then maybe. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Anyways, um, you were saying things about how you know they're connecting threads and some things like little things pay off. Yeah, and the things that you think are like unimportant. Mm-hmm. Um, another show that I just started watching. You've been raving about um for Halo. quite a while. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You said that he's been I, raving about Halo. I've been raving about it. No, I have not. Um, I haven't even seen it. He can't even finish the sentence. Is Abbott I can't Elementary. finish the pilot. It's Abbott Elementary. Yes. Abbott Elementary. And we can talk about it because Link's not here. And we did promise that we would talk trash about Link in yeah, his absence. Chicken out pastor. Okay, so Link. Overpriced. Consi- yeah, Link considers himself the. Overspiced. Quintessential comedic voice on not this nice. show. And probably in his life, right? He thinks he's so Yeah, he's the king of comedy. Right, right. You know? He's Robert De Niro. He's literally Robert De Niro. Murdering people. And it's just, he's murdering us in a sense. Yeah. He's murdering our, you know, comedic abilities because he just absorbs, he just, you know, sucks the comedy. Yeah, that's why I'm not even funny on this show. We aren't funny. We're, you know, we have those deep and serious episodes. We're the two straight men. Exactly. What does that make Link? The comedic foil. So, 
he doesn't like this show. He was always trashing. I Abel think. Elementary. I, I think it's because I mean, I feel like Link is can be a hipster in some way. Elitist Link. Elitist Link. For Elitist sure. Link. But um, I think I think I just think I got overhyped for him because I did talk. Yeah, to, I he, can he see ta- that. He, he told me he was like, I think it's funny, but I don't think it's the funniest thing in the world. You know, to me. I started watching it and I couldn't stop. I binged that thing like that. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. I might argue it's the funniest show on TV right now. I, yeah, they don't really. What have, else? What else is gonna yeah, be exactly? What, young Sheldon. So that's what. <laughs> well, Link does love Young Sheldon. Mid-age He's Sheldon? constantly raving about it. Really? Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. But uh, so, what makes Abbott Elementary so great for anyone who hasn't ch- checked it out? And it is also in season three. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not an educator. I don't work in the school system. Um, so I mean, like that has to hit you guys in a different you know, way completely. And I think you know, Link is closer to a newer educator, so maybe it's just too traumatic for him. I think yeah, maybe he's just Greg. Yeah, I think he's just you know. Yeah, I I don't know. He doesn't I think, find comedy in it. I think the humor. I think the style of shooting. You know that you know not mockumentary. It's, it's like documentary style, right? I think it is a mockumentary because it is it is supposed to be a documentary. Unlike Modern Family, which it reminds me a lot in tone. Mm-hmm. Modern Family didn't really have an explanation why it was a documentary, yeah. but they are... There's film- callbacks. There's, there, there's attention to detail in this show, yeah. and that's what I love about it. And they it. refer to the fact that they're being filmed exactly. by a crew. So this is a documentary series, much in the vein of The Office. Yeah. I and think- it doesn't reach the heights of The Office. I think that's what Link expects. Yeah. But, man, it's good. No, I, th- I think that the humor... I think it's the closest I think I've, we've gotten since then yeah in some, i think so in some yeah, regards yeah. it's better than the last two seasons yeah. of the office i think a lot of the jokes land for me a lot of them are just you know it's not like it's not necessarily dumb humor they have some dumb jokes but they they just make it funny yeah and they call back to it and there's little things that like are said are said by certain characters that like call back towards the end of the episode or like a couple episodes later and it's like it because for me when i watch something i pay attention to little things like mm-hmm. that and so being rewarded like a payoff or a joke like that, it'd be like that to me is it's rewarding. It's yeah. fulfilling. And it's like, that makes a good show to me when you, you know, you're planting little seeds for them to like, eventually they grow and sprout and like they get a big pop out of me. And I laugh my butt off watching this. Yeah. Show. Yeah. And I, I def, I think it's fantastic. And I think everyone should definitely check it out. Even link. Yeah. And I think probably because links main style of comedy, I think is satire or absurdist comedy. And I think this show is funny because it's so true. Like, it's so beyond true. And I also like that it's measured. It, it It's very balanced in the way that it presents real societal issues in education. Mm. And I think you can learn from it. I think if you're in the education field, you're like, finally, someone is saying it or that's so true or look at this perspective and it even challenges you. And I think if you're on the outside looking, you're like, that's crazy. No way. I think it's like in the office. I worked in an office before I was in the classroom Mm. and I loved the office before that. But when I got into an office, I understood, no, this is not, this is what being in an office is like. An office job is literally as absurd as this. And I think you might, you might be surprised at just how true to form the show is. No. And, and I think, I mean, obviously like at its, at its core, it's interactions with people. It's interactions with people that these people are, you know, teaching the younger generation or teaching their, you know, Shaping hearts and minds, yeah. you know, and I think not being an educator myself, but seeing you guys and your friend group and, you know, the things that you talk about, your experiences, your stories and how you like a lot of them are funny, man. A lot of you, <laughs> a lot of times you say things and I'm telling you, did you write that down? Because that's hilarious. And you guys have to make a show. But then I watch Abbott Elementary. Yeah, and it like, might have ruined. I've had well, that idea for a show this whole time. Well, I still think I got a different angle on it, but I don't know if I'll ever get yeah. around to it. But it's like in my Abbott's head, very close. Like, I won't even lie. Like in my head, sometimes watching Abbott Elementary, I, I put you guys into those situations. I put yeah. you guys in that, you know, in those situations that they have in the show. Um, so it, it makes me think of you guys. And it's like thinking of you guys in those positions. I think it's hilarious. Like, I think that's super funny. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love the show. Couldn't recommend it enough check out bad batch and abbott elementary both in season three it's easy to catch up because they are half hour comedies half hour sci-fi bite-sized television all right yeah what's not bite size? uh you know what's not bite size are films well depends if you watch the j-lo movie or not yeah or if you think werewolf by night is a movie which guy who keeps messaging me 
No, it is not. It doesn't matter that there's not an Oscar winner in that f- television special, okay? Uh, he's about to get explicit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned Oscar and not the hot dog. So we're going to talk about, briefly talk about the Oscars. I could use a hot dog. Um, yeah, very briefly because we did a whole episode on the Oscars, but that was before the Oscars. And so after the Oscars, I think it was a very good show. I think it was a very good show. It was entertaining. They kept it short for once. Finally. Always my complaint. Did they start early? Is that what it is? Too? They did start early, but they also ended on time. Yeah. Yeah, which is... Uh, I think everything went quick. There yeah. wasn't a lot of... I mean, towards the end, there was a little drama, but... Yeah, yeah but I, I also think they slowed it down towards the end because they were so ahead of schedule. Yeah. Which is... I'm impressed, guys. You did a good job, guys. And we our picks kind of sweeped. Yeah, I was we, happy. We, we hit almost everything. We right? won. Yeah, we won the Oscars. We are now Oscar winners. Um, yeah, like some of the and some of the segments, like the John Cena segment, was hilarious. We are Oscar Meyer winners. Should be the title of the episode. There you go. Write that down. Okay, the John Cena segment was hilarious. the John Cena segment. A lot of wrestling representation. Yeah, yeah. We got The Rock. We got Bad John Bunny. Cena. We got Bad Bunny, WWE superstar Bad Bunny. Come on, TK. When are you going to get all elite wrestling stars at the Oscars? That's true. I'm surprised Logan Paul wasn't on. But we got we got uh, Monet. A Mercedes, Mercedes Monet. Monet. Oh, I guess, yeah. We didn't plan on talking about that. The former Sasha Banks in AEW. That's a big get, man. That well, is That's huge. Welcome home. Hopefully, you do good for our business and you don't punch anyone out backstage and then run back to the WWE. I'm looking at you. CM Punk. Take your lips off of Cody. Yeah. If no one gets that, <laughs> I, I don't even, don't even Google don't it. Even Google, even yeah, it. don't Google it. Anyways, um, so big get, big, I think, definitely huge for the for the women's division in AEW. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they lost, you know, uh, Jade Cargo, but in reality, we traded lost. up. Yeah. We traded up. Yep. Yep. So, um, also, I mean, while we're in the vein of wrestling, why are you avoiding talking about Halo? Okay, go go with wrestling. I'm sorry. Continue. The Rock. The Rock. The Rock has uh, been been all over the place, man. Yeah, he's been all over the place promoting this fight. We can also talk about this because Link is not here. Because Link also hates the Link Rock. Link hates the Rock. Like he can't stand him. He's like, like he, overrated. Like if any time if it's popular, Link's like, nah, bro. Yeah. he sucks. He's not. He's not what he's not and, what he used to listen, be. And listen, listen. For those of you that don't know, The Rock had a bad run against john cena where he was not funny and he was kind of phoning it in he was oh, i'm doing a movie i'm gonna stop by raw and i'm gonna read the words from my wrist like i i did a cheat sheet and john cena's gonna call me out and i'm gonna look stupid um but he is killing it right now yeah again this family does not watch wwe correct but we do watch 30 minute uh promos on instagram that Bro. he posts the Rock and, is putting in a shift right now. Yeah. I can tell you that much. I, I've watched the first or last 30 minutes of SmackDown only through YouTube or Twitter or Instagram somehow. Yeah. The funny thing is, I feel like with SmackDown, like it is, it really is just entertainment. Yeah. It isn't wrestling at this yeah. point. <laughs> I don't watch the wrestling. I, don't, I haven't seen a wrestling match. I watch all elite <laughs> wrestling. Yeah. You know? But, but I watch world wrestling entertainment Entertainment. Segments. It on is, my social media it's, and it's, or YouTube. And I think The Rock is entertaining. Yeah. Can he wrestle? <laughs> we'll find out, I but, guess. Yeah, and I think we will because, like I said, we don't watch WWE. I think I'm going to check out WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, the, the Rock's going to be there. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I want to see how this all plans out. Plus, my boy Cody, Redemption. Can I make my prediction? Go ahead. Cody pins The Rock, night one. Cody pins Roman, night two. Don't give me hope. <laughs> Don't get, because last year messed me up man well remember though that heartbreak feels good in a place like this and trust me that ep- that episode after wrestlemania that's gonna have it's gonna be e for explicit yeah. <laughs> if it goes the way i think it's gonna go um so that's a little bit of wrestling um oscars we talked he about brought it up not me. nolan episode yeah we talked about congrats. oppenheimer fantastic you haven't seen it watch it what are you doing stop exactly. listening to this you, we know you're not so arnold danny devito beautiful Batman. Mm. Oh, Batman. the the funniest Oscar segment ever. Mr. Mr. Freeze, Mr. Freeze and uh, the Penguin calling out Batman in the front row. And it's just like you see Michael Keaton as Batman. I'm like, oh, well, I can't wait to. Batman Michael Beyond. Keaton is Batman. Batman Beyond. <laughs> Remember that time last episode where I thought Link was giving props to Batman '89, but it was really just <laughs> that Twilight Vampire one. Robert Pattinson, and then he was like, Oh, 
Yeah, that's crazy. Um. Anyways, okay. So you want me to talk about what? Halo? I want you to talk about Halo. Just Fine. admit that you watch Halo. All right, let's let's talk about Halo. Uh, Halo season one came out in 2022, of April 2022, and they didn't and cancel I, it immediately. And for I some stopped reason. watching in April of 22. <laughs> I couldn't get past three episodes because. Master Chief just walking around with his helmet like it's no big deal. And like that to me was an affront. That to me was so disrespectful that I was like, I don't want to watch this. And then I heard that he smashes. Yeah, he gets naked, right? Yeah. And like he's like, what checking episode himself. is he naked? I don't remember that. Okay. I honestly don't remember. Oh, okay. but uh, the thing was is it not that, recently that you watched it? He's not naked in the episode that he has that he does it. What? <laughs> it's a different episode. It's a different episode where he's like just fully nude and like he's like, I don't know, patching himself up or something. I don't know. Okay. But anyways, like. Even that, like, who is this for? <laughs> why, why am I watching? Why do I need to see cheeked up Master Chief? Is he still Master completely Cheeks? helmetless in season two? Yeah, but it makes more sense. It makes more sense. Why does season two start with like he comes into the scene and he goes, "I'm helmetless. Deal with it." And then no, they they basically take the suit away oh because he because it's like <laughs> no spartan armor in season two not as much as you would think this makes the show better somehow e- to me i think it's more halo because i can like it just they kind of go like because in the route of season one didn't make any sense he is literally in a room full of hostiles in enemy territory just walking around with his helmet makes no sense it's like they're forcing him to have face time you mean like boba fett in the book of boba exactly. fett exactly <laughs> let me go like visit that. my enemies exactly like that season two it's like it makes more sense and we get to see you know the chief without the armor the armor doesn't make him master chief i think is what they were going oh master for. chief yeah not uh john or whatever not uh what do they call the president of the united states commander in you no no hold on but it's kind of i mean anyway season two i mean it's not like big spoilers but like the government's kind of like evil mm-hmm. and not evil but they're they're terrible people and so count dooku is leading the trade federation exactly and then like count dooku, count dooku and the government take the armor leaving without it so he doesn't have a crutch so like he's interesting you know, and he has to do that all without the armor and all of season two is out all of season two is I, out as it, of as of last week and you watched it all no i'm on not like 20 minutes after the last episode uh, so it must be enthralling then yeah oh because i've i mean i've been on the road yeah okay like i was watching my phone i'm like i'm gonna finish this on a big screen okay um no but there's episodes where like the 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 episode ends and i'm like oh my god i gotta keep watching i gotta keep watching next next all right the real question is can i just skip the season two yeah for sure watch okay. a recap video season one don't bother it don't waste your time watch season two watch okay watch the first episode of season two if you want to watch it from there if you don't want to watch it from there then i can't help you maybe halo should have like a a filler episode list where you like watch three episodes of the i show. think just skip season one <laughs> just skip <laughs> that's season the one. filler list you heard it here first. Skip season one. Um, but I, because literally, I was texting. I was like, I don't see how they can redeem this. I don't see how they can make it. Because we heard like there was the reviews were actually pretty good for yeah, season two. They're solid. And I was like, how is that even? There's no way. And then I watched into it. And I'm like, immediately from the jump, you can tell. Um, it's a good quali- CBS show. The quality has increased. It's a good CBS show. No, this feels more like an actual like if it was like. A showtime? big budget, yeah, Showtime production. Okay. okay. First season one did not. Season no, one, yeah. the qual, even the, the the way that the camera looked, the, the cinematography mm-hmm. it just looked the way that this one looks. And I think they figured out. I think they realized we shouldn't do everything in broad daylight. <laughs> yeah, that makes it sense. Makes it looks a lot better. Okay. Um, and I, I think they might have got a new showrunner or writer. Um, because it definitely shows for sure. But yeah, hopefully, and, yeah. hopefully they killed the Halo episode. season two. Watch the first episode of season two and then decide. Um, okay, so one show that you've been watching that's been coming out weekly. This is my pick of the month. I'm going to say it right now. Okay? I've only seen two episodes. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. X-Men 97. I haven't seen it. Guys, you have to watch this show. You have to. And I don't know if it's going to hit with you like like it hit with me because I'm guessing that X-Men 97 is a concept in your mind and not a core memory. You know? You have an idea. I, I, watch, I watch reruns. Right. Okay. Like I watched the show, but I didn't. So watch you can it. remember the kind of stories that you experienced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like Dark Phoenix. Like I, I watched a lot of. I watched X Men '97. I watched the the old Spider Man. 
Oh, okay, okay, perfect. Special. A lot of those old animated like shows that like I think came out when I was either not born or born. Yeah, not even born. Um, right. There was a lot of reruns on on like those like extra Disney. Okay, those like adjacent Disney, yeah, yeah. Disney channels. So shows. I didn't know if it was a thing that you watched or a thing that you watched over and over. Because for me, it was like gospel. Yeah. Um, no, probably not as much as like like a Code's Name Kids Next Door, like any of those like Toonami cartoons and stuff like that. Okay. No, because that's yeah, those, yeah, those yeah, are I things understand. that like yeah, that right. was on for it's me constantly on repeat, right? Yeah. Okay. That those like those shows were things that I had to like. I w- it wasn't always at my disposal. Right. I mm-hmm. had to like that. There's yeah. specific. Did I have cable that month? All right. Right. And we're gonna watch. No, that. and even then, it's like, are they airing it? Yeah. Because unlike the world we live in today, you couldn't just be like, oh, that thing I heard and, about and, it. Let me go check the that, whole thing out. That's the thing too. It's like you would watch it maybe like, like normal times for me when the reruns are on like two in the morning. Yeah. Two or three in the morning. Random episodes. Exactly. You don't even know if you've seen them all. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I've, so No, I definitely haven't. Okay. So then for me, X-Men 97 was the shiznit. I think we can say that. Mm-hmm. It was... I realize now, coming back to this new show, X-Men 97, okay, versus X-Men the Animated Series, that everything I know and love about X-Men is based on the show. When I watch a movie and it's not like... X Men ninety like X Men the animated series. Immediately, I'm like, this sucks. I hate it. I'm like, when I read a comic and the lineup is not like the '90s X Men, I hate it. It sucks. Rogue is not the way she is in the comics, oh, yeah. which you know informed um, the animated I, I series. Feel like Rogue, I feel like Rogue is like such a like a forgotten character yeah. like now. You yeah. Know? For me, Rambit, or Rambit, Gambit, Gambit, and uh, Rogue. Rambit, I guess that Rambit. is what I meant. Rambit forever, you know. And the only time Gambit and Rogue should not be together is when the story is that there's something get in between them, you know, which X Men ninety seven does now. So for me, like it's Cyclops and Jean. It's too bad that you think Cyclops is boring. They're meant to be together. They're gonna have a family. I don't know how Jean Grey became the love interest for Wolverine permanently in the films, but I, I mean. Every, I mean, everyone always dogged on on Cyclops. Yeah, I always liked. He's got a tough job, man. I always liked Cyclops. Like, and I think they did anybody him, could be the bad boy. I think, they, I think they did him dirty, like in the movies. They did. Like they just like they're pushing Wolverine, and they're just like, oh, like especially you know, how they killed him. Scott's this, yeah. Scott's like a, a super goody two shoes mm-hmm. and all this stuff. I always like I always like Cyclops. He was the first X Men toy that I got. Cyclops in the movies is like a parody of what Cyclops. It's yeah. what everyone remembers Cyclops being, and he really isn't. He's that. so cool. He's man. a strong leader, and for like a long amount of time. And listen, I get it. Wolverine's cool, but also Wolverine's not reliable. He's constantly running away. Cyclops is or the guy relatable. that stays by your side. Okay, he's the guy that. All right, maybe he's a B plus player, right? But he's not just gonna walk away on the team randomly. Yeah, yeah, I think you can. Okay, yeah. Scott's not necessarily the one night stand. Why like would Wolverine you say that? Is. You'd say that on this show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're explicit, okay? Oh, that's right. Mark this episode for you. But Wolverine, Wolverine's the type of guy that's just like, what's up? And then leaves. Yeah. Scott's not that. He's dependable. He's reliable. And he's a good leader. And he is what a good leader should strive to be. And I'm just, I'm not here for the for the Cyclops slander anymore. So if you have any nostalgia for X-Men the Animated Series, X-Men 97 is going to scratch that itch, but it's not just going to rely on nostalgia. The art, it can be what some might consider janky in the sense that like it tries to mirror the style of 97, but it's clean, man. It's shiny. It's new. And they're not depending on what happened before. They are pushing the series forward like if it was a new season. So, okay. So, okay. That's my question. What is the thematic connection what is the story is it a it, continuation is it something's happened something it didn't? is literally a continuation of x-men the animated series so you have to watch x-men the animated series and then watch x-men 97 i would say that would be the best thing to do but you could just jump into this series it's like bad batch is gonna have to take a uh, back seat i want to be honest with you i accept that if you're gonna go back and watch yeah, x-men i'm gonna go back yeah that show is good okay only two episodes are out right now third one's coming out soon um i believe that's going i don't remember how many episodes of 10 12 i don't know but um i like i said i've been trying to binge i don't know if i'm gonna be able to hold out i might watch this show week to week even though it's only a half hour show i loved episode half one hour two. yeah i thought it'd be 20 minutes well yeah yeah it's a half hour i mean that's what it is like 22 minutes yeah yeah so um they dropped the first two so that's how why i couldn't resist 
and I might be hooked week to week. Hopefully, I don't eat those words and the show doesn't go off a cliff. But so far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. And talking about two episodes in animation, I'm going to go on to Amazon Prime's Invincible. Yes. Back, back from break, which I thought was dumb, but whatever. Very like, dumb. It was, a, it was too long of a break that... Well, I don't even. Do you know why? That yeah, because thing? it's just it took like three years to do the next season. So they're trying to space it out. They're trying so to it's space all it. done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was all done. Yeah. So they did four before Christmas, I think that was the timeline, and now they dropped the last four, which I'm waiting for the last four. So you've seen the first two. Yeah. Episodes five and six, technically of season yeah. two. Invincible's back. Invincible strong. I. But like I, Invincible's super long, right? Like yeah. the comic book. Mm, yeah, really long. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how far, how long that's gonna. Like, if you're gonna take sixteen thousand years to put all that stuff out, like, I almost lost interest, like with how like long it took. You know. Um, my wife sh- yeah. literally commented, "Wait, this is a show? I thought that was a miniseries." <laughs> because it was like, when did we watch that? Three years ago. I think. I mean, but still, like. The show's good. The show's yeah, great. Like absolutely. the animation's great. I, th- I think it's fan- I think it's I think it's awesome. Um, so far they've they've started up strong again. We have what two f- two episodes? Yeah, two episodes left. Yeah, you've seen the Adam Eve special. I think we've talked about. I that. haven't seen it yet. Oh okay. Um, sure. probably should have watched it before season two. I don't like the the br- like the that long break, man. I don't. And I mean, no. I guess production like man, it's just they they couldn't do anything about that. I yeah, guess. but I mean. Time. They should have just dropped the eight and then made. A yeah, I don't. Stretch. I don't like this like halfway through stretching, like yeah. you know, dragging it out. I heard a rumor that there might be a big cameo. When? In this, by the end of the season. Like as an actor, or like? No, well, maybe. Yeah, I'm not really no character. Yeah, no, it's um, apparently it's a mainstream character, Optimus, like an actual crossover. That's all I'm gonna say because I've also seen it disputed, so I don't want a rumor monger. That's interesting. Just keep your eyes open Anyways, in case it happens. Invincible. Two weeks. Amazon Prime. Check it As out. If you didn't have enough on your list. How many episodes in season one? Eight. Yeah. So you're, it's only been like 12, 14. 14. Episodes. Yeah. So check it out. Yeah. All right. Um, quickly, The Gentleman on Netflix. That was that was a good show. What is That's The not Gentleman? great. What's The Gentleman? The Gentleman is a 2019 movie by Guy Ritchie with Matthew McConaughey and... Charlie Hunnam. Oh yeah, I was like, and isn't there already a gentleman? Colin Colin Farrell. Colin Firth. Colin Farrell. I try to get me. That's why I have to like. <laughs> I have to rethink what I said. Um, the show, the movie's funny, witty, and I think it. I think it's great. I think it's really good. Did and they recast the people from the show? The is in the same universe. No, of the like. There's the gentleman cinematic there's universe. A, there's like a character that's mentioned, but other than that, no one shows up. But it's kind of like. Is it connected to Argyle? No, but maybe. I don't, I, mean, I don't know. Argyle's a multiverse connection, so who knows? Um, it's a good weekend watch. Yeah, it's a good. How many episodes? The, the yes, ten episodes. Okay, I mean, on a one hour. That's show. That's not true. It's eight. It's eight. It's eight. eight. One hour show. One hour. Eight yeah. hours. Okay. Yeah. Um, Something worth moving up in your queue, or is like everything else we've been talking about kind of ahead of it? Um. No, nah, watch Halo. <laughs> <laughs> and no, um, no, nah, I watch everything else pretty much. First. Maybe not Halo. So if you run out of all of this and whatever else you want to watch, watch The Gentleman. I mean, it depends. If you like, you know, a little gangster mobish type of TV show, that's would you agree funny. that you should? Would you agree that you should see the movie? Yeah, definitely. Okay, I mean, so. watch the movie. Don't even watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch the movie. What are you doing? Um. So yeah, so I think now down to the last two, which I think are, is the strong, the, the two best. Two, if you've made it this far, yeah, the strongest two. I think thirty for forty. Um, with a connection to a little island, Hawaii. Correct. Aloha, Alaska. Vice. Aloha Vice. Oh, on. I'd watch that on Max. No, they had that show already, isn't it? Hawaii Five O. Yeah, Hawaii Five O. <laughs> yeah, okay, I did not watch that. Um, Tokyo Vice on Max season two. Um, we have two episodes left. We do. By the time this, no, that's the next thing I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, two episodes left. Yeah, two episodes left, and it's fantastic. This season has elevated that show to new heights, and I cannot rave about the show more. The only thing I can rave about more is the next show we're going to talk about. But Tokyo Vice, did you finish season one? 
Season one, yes. Season one was excellent. I remember like halfway through it, I was like, this show is so good. And it's also like not very strong. It's pretty clean. And then immediately love scene. Like, uh, yeah. But <laughs> um, regardless. <laughs> they gave you the E. Yeah. Strong, strong show. I love it. I was just talking to with this about Link. No. I was just talking to Link about this. And I was like, you should read the book because it's like straight journalism and crime drama. And I think he was intrigued. I think I'm going to get him to read the book. The book was excellent. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's completely different. But at the same time, nice companion piece. Tokyo Vice season one was great. I can't wait to watch season two, but I'm waiting for it to all be done. It's so good, guys. It's so good. I think I'm going to start soon. So since I'm all caught up on Bad Batch, I'm just going to watch the weekly Bad Batch and X-Men. No, I'm not going to even watch the weekly Bad Batch. I'm sorry. Just the weekly X-Men. Wait for the back half. And Tokyo Vice is the next thing I'm watching. Word. Word. Oh, excellent. Great cast. How's this guy still able to do it, by the way? Ansel Elgort? Yeah, didn't he get canceled? Soft canceled. Soft canceled. But also, he knows Japanese. Oh, so it's like, like, and also he's good. So they're just he like, is good. You know. I think it's impressive, man. Japanese is one of the hardest languages to learn. Is it weird that I, every time I remember that he's on this show, I'm like, but he eats people. And then I remember that he is not Arm, Army, Army Hammer. Army Hammer? Yeah, that's not, that's not who it is. So. I don't think that's got. I mean, I don't think that's got enough like play. The fact that yeah, the guy, Army, the Hammer guy's like might be a cannibal. Cannibal, bro. Allegedly, I don't know anything about this. Just for the record, this is just what people say. This, you know, people talk. It's crazy. It's don't sue crazy. us. Crazy. Yeah. CM Punk sucks. Um. Yeah. Tokyo Vice on Max. Check it out. Seasons one and two. But the gonna, best show. I feel like I was going to say something. But about Tokyo Vice? Yeah. But oh, it was probably going to be like in Japanese. And it would have. It just would have been something that Link would have said. That yeah. would have been like, can you say that? Yeah. And then we'd be like, haha, you're so funny. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my goodness. We don't so know if edgy, we're going to cancel that, or flip like, that on social media. This is going to work. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We miss you, Link. Yeah. But the show, I think, that has stole our hearts and our mind is Shogun. Shogun. Hulu fx wow what did you say fx oh fx okay yeah that, that that was the e for explicit no, that's okay not yet <laughs> shogun what's so great about this show um so shogun first off miniseries based off of a book that's my favorite part right it's one and done like it's, you're gonna so watch this show and then it's over it's, it's doing its thing we're not gonna and, decide and whether it, audiences like it or if we it, should pivot the characters in another direction exactly and it knows it it knows it and it's beautiful the lighting, the cinematography, just the way that it looks is gorgeous. Japan is gorgeous. And, you know, again, going back, attention to detail in terms of actors. And I think the way that, like, a translation is a big part. I think I'm, I haven't read the book, but from what I've read and from what I've heard, that is also a big part. Are we doing that? In the, in the, in the novel. In the novel. Um, and so, to me, and I think one of the main actor, and I always forget his name, man. I'll look it up. The guy from Avengers Endgame and many other samurai films that else. I haven't seen. Yeah, and lots of different movies. The cast is stellar. Nah, I need to know his name. Yeah, I'm I know. I'm just vamping. Nestor Carbonal has a um, a supporting role, I guess, like a guest role. Yeah, I wasn't and, expecting that. Yeah, and he's way different than he ever has been in any other, if you don't. Nestor Carbonal, he's the commissioner before Gordon in the Dark Knight series. And I've always been a big fan of him. Um, antagonistic uh, police officer in the Bad Boy series, right? And like Bad Boys 2 in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. And he was on an old show um, with, uh, what's her name? Brooke Shields back in the day that I used to watch. Anyways, he's great and he's the performance of his career, yeah, I for think. Real. On this show, I, f- I mean, I I also think he was good on um, morning the show. morning show, yeah. But that's show's more, not great, but like, but that's more the thing. That's the thing that the performances are good on yeah. that show, and that's but that's more in the vein of like the performances that he has done, like the kind of characters that he plays. Um, but this is way out of his what I thought would think was his depth, but he nails it. Yeah, and the girl from Godzilla's in it too. Anna Sawai, yeah. Monarch Legacy of Monsters. She plays Mariko. Yeah. So the actor's name is Hiroyuki Sanada. He's also in John Wick, chapter oh. four. Chapter four. Yeah. Okay. 
And John so, Wick's killed a lot of people. I can't keep track. No, he doesn't kill him. Oh, he does. His friend, the friend from. Oh, that's right. He, he gets killed by all the people that yeah. attack the. They break the sanctuary. So he plays a character called uh, Lord Toronaga, and he is basically the Ned Stark. Yes. Of this I, show, I drew the parallels right away, but I'm obviously not the only one. I yeah. saw this written after. Yeah. And it's just, it's a lot of politics. It's a lot of, um, I think. You know, they have an outsider from uh, an Englishman coming to Japan. To which I first rebuffed against because I was like, okay, here we go. White Savior, Last Samurai, plus like the books by uh, a Western author, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, but wow, do nah, they handle it so it's, well. It's so good. And I think I think one of the things that speaks to me is, and I think we got into this last episode, was just his, the character, I think his name is Blackthorn. He... Just the difference in in um, como se llama the not ways of life the perspective uh, worldview 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 I think worldview of how World these star. people how yeah <laughs> about these people live um, and culture and I think that was something that me personally as well that I was you know reflecting on after watching movies like. I mean, funny enough, Godzilla mm-hmm. and and Oppenheimer as well. I, I think a lot one. of like uh, things from like a lot of Japanese culture. You I were know. reflecting after watching Godzilla X Kong. No, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, that hasn't happened yet. I okay. might not even. Okay. Um, but just like you know, the difference in culture, like some things that like that wouldn't even like cross my mind yeah. to think of, and then to them. Did you watch this? Did you watch? The yeah, I'm all episode? caught up. I'm all caught. Yeah, up. so there's something that happens in the most recent episode that the guy. He says one little thing and it has major repercussions. Mm-hmm. Like re- it's incredible. And I think. And, but, at f- and at first I'm on the Western side of the issue where I'm like, that's ridiculous. Basically in a nutshell, without any spoilers, it's, it challenges the adherence to tradition and rule set so rigidly that yeah. the Japanese people, especially here in feudal Japan have. And that sustains their culture. And you're like, it's true. It's ridiculous. Everything is not literally life and death. But then it shows you the other side of it, right? Where you're like, words matter. Words matter. And your position, the people under you depend on you. And their life depends on you, you know? And it's you can apply it to so much. It's like, if you if they work for you, they're literally the food on the table. You know, whether their kids get to eat depends on. And that's a responsibility and that you can't measure. And it's like, we don't take things seriously enough in the West. And they take things way too seriously in the east and and perhaps like the human reaction is somewhere in the middle but you don't get to exist in the middle ironically i'm always a big like against extremes but sometimes you're pulled like a system has to work in a certain way for everyone to buy in and i think they challenge that notion i know mariko has a speech about you know if the only thing you seek is freedom You'll never, never be, be free. free. And that hits so hard because that seems to be such like a core principle of us here in the West, especially in the US. And I connect very much with the concept of the hidden heart that goes throughout this whole show. And it even helped me understand other works like Is that like the 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 fence or whatever? Yeah, the one where the, the the real you that you keep inside that only you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like you ha- there's a you that your friends know. There's a new you that your family. There's even a you that your spouse knows. But the real hidden you, only you know it. And it's that's what I believe to be a truth that we don't like to accept, but that really no one will know the inner workings of every sinew of your heart except you. And parts of that have to be hidden. Some because they're shameful. Some to protect yourself. Yeah. And we don't like to hear that. And we don't like to feel that. But I, I it resonates with me. No. Yeah. No. 1000%. I think that's that's what also makes the show. It's such a... The composition, like everything, the components that go into this show, it's, it's more than just a great TV show. It's more than yeah. just a, a thrilling piece of entertainment to watch. I think that it speaks a lot about, I think it speaks a lot to, you know, how we live our lives, but also how different the human experience is for mm-hmm. different people. And I mean, one of the other things was the Eightfold Fence, I think is what it was called. Yes. Um, 
where she's talking about like, you know, you have all these things up inside you, like things can happen, you know, that bring out emotions that bring out this, but there's a certain point where you have to kind of in a healthy way, keep things like in a, in a, it's an eighth offense. It's the way that like, you don't let things, you don't let things or, you know, things get to you in a way that people, other people are going to see you to affect your decision making. Because like you said, so a lot of people that in this show, like they're leaders and people depend on those people. And if like in feudal Japan, like, you know, weakness was a great thing, weakness and honor. And because, you know, the slightest little thing and they straight off the bat of the show, someone literally just interjects in a conversation between higher ups and the person like has to commit like, an act where it's like it's extremely drastic and not only for himself no and also not only that because you see that moment and, and if you've watched japanese media you've seen these you know i've never seen that where they take the the family yeah oh no yeah where they have to do end the line responsibility yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it just it, mm-hmm. it puts responsibility into a new perspective for everyone but not what, just higher ups what captured me too is that that same situation you see it presented like time and time again and it's like literally everything is life and death and that is just such a crazy way to live but it's the only way that they know and i don't have you ever seen that um scorsese film silence mm-hmm. okay what 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 did you think of that film i thought it was okay i i really didn't like the overarching theme of the film mm-hmm. and like the conclusion of it but this series made me understand where they were coming from in a way that I think Scorsese couldn't communicate it to me. Mm-hmm. I understand the hidden heart in the film Silence yeah. because of this. And now I understand with, I don't know if I agree with it, but now I don't know if I disagree with it. You, you know? Exactly. Because it's, I don't I, know if there's an answer. No, I mean, because this show's going to do it because it's it's like this this person is going into a, into a land unknown, a land that is not his. And... It's not like he's, you know, professing his beliefs, but he's just reacting to the things that are happening mm-hmm. to it's like around him. And it's it's shocking, but there are some things that like they win him over. Like it just like convinces him like this person deserves my respect mm-hmm. because of like as a per- as a man, as a person like of strength, like he's willing to do this instead of, you know, what a coward would do in a sense. Yeah. You know? And I think and I think and like on those in like on those grounds like in print those principles that they have is something that like anyone can respect yeah because it's like that's not how i grew up that's not who i like my worldview or how i see the world or how i like i even even though saying it the word value life Mm -hmm. because they value life but they value life in a different way they value life so much that it's like going back to it words matter and I think that to me... It's not worth living unless it has meaning. Exactly. It, it's, the and they sh- attach meaning to everything. The show has such a profound... They attach meaning to everything, even every word. Literally, because the translations that they have, because not everyone speaks you know, Japanese, there's a, there's, you know, a go-between, there's a middleman, there's a translator um, that chooses words carefully and chooses words like specific words yeah it's almost like she operates f- f- the evangelical concept of the holy spirit <laughs> yeah. is like this man is saying this but this is what he means to say exactly you know? she's reading she's reading through um you know the the, the rhetoric i guess rhetoric but yeah i i absolutely love the show and i'm i could talk about it a lot more time. I'm sure we yeah, will yeah. talk about it once the show's done and yeah, done and yeah. dusted. It might be a thing. It might maybe we'll do a panel. I think and, we should. Um one last thing I want to talk about it for yeah. those of you that are just what how many episodes are in right now? Six. six. Five or six. Okay. Tomorrow's six. Tomorrow. So by the time this episode drops, there's six. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. I don't know who's not gonna love it. If you don't enjoy the show, I'm so sorry for you. But it is terrific. There's two ways to watch it. And most of you guys have been watching it the sub way and we're going back to our anime argument you know sometimes i'm doing something or you know i just don't want to be reading all the time so i tried this thing on hulu they have the dub version in a separate tab mm. it's like hidden away it is the best dub i've ever seen because it refuses to dub all the dialogue when two japanese characters are speaking in private They'll use an English dub so that you don't have to read these long stretches of conversation and you can listen along. 
in English. But when a character is speaking to, when a Japanese character is speaking to a Western character, for example, the British, who speaks actually Portuguese, right? Mm -hmm. We hear it on the show in English. Um, it will be English and Japanese. You will have to read because it will make no sense if everyone on the screen, you'll just get lost and confused. Yeah. Or it wouldn't make sense. They could do it because I've seen it. But it wouldn't make any sense for both of them, their dialogue to be in English. So you are forced to listen to those moments in Japanese. And it's a nice compromise, I think. And if you're the kind of person that typically watches in dub, it is a nice pushing you in the right direction of, you know, interfacing with this language head on. There's still long stretches of it that are in Japanese. Yeah. So, so if you think that that is a challenge for you or a barrier to entry, watch the dub. You're still going to learn some stuff. All right. That is the quick and dirty 58, <laughs> 50, no, four. Maybe yeah, fifty four. Well, by the time we start, by the time we start, yeah. George right. isn't fifty four, by the way. Yeah, just that's not. Just or let you, I don't want to worry you. There's just one more thing, though. Yeah, the one thing I didn't get to watch because we watched all this time spending on the TV and we didn't go to the movies in March. Fortnite. No, no, not Fortnite. <laughs> There's plenty of monthlies to talk about that. What? I want to watch Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Is that the Frozen name? Empire? Yeah. Yeah, I was excited for this movie what until did you, I heard. What did you hear? Until I heard it's... Well, no, I heard two things. I heard... They're just like, Ghostbusters is a kid's movie. It's a good family fun. It's a good time out of the movies with your family and like watching this stuff. That's all I need. Which is like, yeah, sure. Link's not here to be like, oh, Paul Rudd's in it. I'm going to watch it. That's what he was. I haven't heard him talk about it enough. No, because he's so tired that he doesn't want to... Oh. He doesn't want to live up to his <laughs> commitment to watch every Paul Rudd movie. Um... But I mean, initial like I heard it sucks. I heard, but I also heard it was mid. So it's like I don't know. It's up in the air. Okay, so, yeah. these are the three things I've heard: worst movie they've ever seen. Okay. Se second of all, it's fun. It's a fun family movie. The great night at the theater. Third, listen, they're never gonna make Ghostbusters one again. Uh huh. But it's at least as good as Ghostbusters two, because everybody knows Ghostbusters two is not that good. To which my response is, says who? Who agreed to this? Bro, shut up. <laughs> All right? Shut your... Vigo, I hope that Vigo the Carpathian... Impales you. Yeah, I hope he comes to you in the middle of the night and he steals your baby. That's crazy. Like, how do you not think Ghostbusters 2 is good? They moved the Statue of Liberty by playing music to the ooze. Man. Like the slime. If you don't like Ghostbusters 2... I don't really respect you. Yeah. Unlike unsubscribe. Exactly. E for explicit. Have a great week, everybody.